previously we sort of considered going up for well, that ridge there uh, that crack let's say but we've got to this point and we know from the map we know on this side that it's a valley and it doesn't actually show a path but when we've got to here it looks like a nice gentle ascent with a little bit of a climb slash scramble at the end of it so we're going to go up there and investigate it take it nice and steady because when push comes to shove we've got to get on that ridge so we're either doing it one way shape or form or the other but if we were to walk up there we were then going to have to walk all the way back going to have to we then wanted to walk all the way back so by doing this a little bit more effort and a bit more adventure so we're going to go and have a look at that very close to the actual uh, the, the, the ridge and um, this is probably our last place that we know of so far to get water and you can see how Nigel's actually using his little disposable bottle um, to fill up the platypus and yeah just a real real clever way of doing it impressed with that mate well done I need to carry this for uh, when it's hot yeah good call that I don't know how much of this you can hear because of the wind. Wind's coming straight uh, towards us. Um, we've now rallied up the... Cheers, nice. It's nice to be in a wind block. It'd be better the other way around. Um, but in the background, right in the very background, is the Langdales. Uh, Pike Abisco over there. This is Grey Knot. And we are now heading up to this ridge line on the map. It's showing quite a severe sort of valley edge dropping off on the other side. So we're going to go up along, there's a, a cairn on the top, we're going to head towards that and then we're going to basically ridge walk behind that summit and then over that way is the old Manor Coniston summit and then from there we're going to drop down. Now Mark was camping Weatherham, Weatherham and we did look at it on the map and I've forgotten. Yeah. Just over there, just so, so we'll be able to see it from that car. Yeah, when we get up to the cairn, we'll be able to point out exactly where Mark uh, pitched up last night, and hopefully, hopefully we'll see him at some point. We didn't sort of plan a, a route. We just said where we're going to pitch up tonight and where we're going to pitch up last night. Time will tell. Come on, mate, let's go. <laughs> I mean, on camera, it has to have a wee. I think it now is Steve. That Thanks, not, pal. Not using me. Nigel just made a point, I, I referred to all these cairns and there's a cairn every sort of 10 metres and I said they've got a bit a cairn happy up here and he said quite rightly that in winter when it's snowing that cliff edge there is going to be a massive drift so you could walk onto that un unknowing that you're going to plummet off the edge of the, the cliff there so yeah, good call, thanks for that Nigel I don't know enough about winter stuff yet so um, it's on the to-do list So that rock in the centre of the town, we were just pitched up by the side of it and this morning we've come down. These are the uh, rivers that we walk by the side of, down there where the sort of rocky 
that area is. We've then come up from that, right the way up this valley. And there. So we've just come down and the old man of Coniston is up this path and that's where we're heading. And we're doing rather well for time. Be dinner o'clock up there, won't it? Yep. I'm ready for some chow. Well, this is the summit of uh, the old man of Coniston. Busy. Uh, no sign of Mark. Um, I think Nigel's taking his boots off, which seems like a good idea, so uh, get a bit of sustenance in me and uh, take the weight off for 10 or 20 minutes. Have a quick walk. That's a broken dog, it's called Barney, it's awake at the moment, it won't be awake for very long and it's attached to a ginger nut. So uh, we're all together now, we don't know where Mark is still, you've not heard of him have you? No. Um, so we're just going to push on en route, Mark knows roughly where we're going to be camping tonight so we'll just see what happens later on. No, it's just quickly lift up Marie's pack and say how heavy it is. I, I would but I can't physically lift it because it's too heavy. What do you reckon it weighs? It's the nearest damn it 20, isn't it? I was about to say, you're getting close to 20 there. How, how far have you gone with that? You've oh, come from Borrowdale? Yeah. That's a mission, that. Have you, have you got any knee cartilage left at all? <laughs> do you want painkillers? You must be in pain. I'm fine. You're shorter. <laughs> So with the estimated weight, we're going to confirm this in the morning, it's 20 kilos for uh, Marie Ginger Nuts, uh, well, caravan. Um, so far we've got most of the uh, Northwest power supply um, in there. We've got a frying pan. We've got Trangia type kettle thing, because obviously you can't boil water in a frying pan. And then what's, is this a plate? And then a plate. Um, is, there any, is there any other cooking attachments? No. Do you have any cooking implements? Are like skillets or out like that? Do you have a chopping board? Do you have a. You can't say that on video. You... So, what else is it? You've got loads of clothes in there, haven't you? You'll have to wait and see. My life's, my life's not that long. It's just this. So one valuable reason that Marie's carrying such a massive amount of weight is uh, she's well, she pointed this out and apparently it's like a curry sauce and it's got um, some type of protein in it. Is it pork or something in this? It's a beef. It's a beef curry. Um, and she gets it in Morrison's. Never seen it. So I'll have to have a look at that and give that a go sometime. Put a bit of a rice with it. Could be good. So camp set up, um, there's Marie and Broken Dog. Do they do a two-man version of that? They do a few versions of that. It's quite big, isn't it? Yeah, it was the one I nearly bought before buying that. That's what I was looking at. There's your curry back. So, the chilli that Ian and I, uh, I made for Ian for the uh, Roach Abbey uh, field trip, um, we've dehydrated it and um, we're going to bring that back to life and then we've got some noodles and then water on the go ready for that and uh, here we are. And our path back to the car is just over there and 
with well under the well under an hour's walk back so that's good and um, yeah it's still pleasant So what um, what Nigel does is he keeps hold of the container and then in the bottom of there is uh, noodles. So he whacked uh, bold water into there, we zipped them up, noodles will come back to life and then we uh, basically did the same thing with the chilli and um, I want to get a spork and chow down. So she might be hard as nails and be able to walk all the way from Borrowdale to this location over two nights carrying enough kit for herself, a dog and the dog's special needs but apparently slugs <laughs> Do you not like slugs? No, You're as bad as Mark for not liking wildlife What's wrong with this slug? Look at him, he's coming to have a look at you that's, that's not very nice. You should love the animals. Go on, mate. We heard off Mark earlier, and um, he said it was going to be thundering and lightning, so he, he, he was going home, fair enough. Um, and it's just started raining and we just heard a rumble of thunder uh, so we're inside basically that's Nigel's backside by the way um, the way that we've rigged the trail star at the time was uh, the right way for the wind um, but now basically the rain's coming in so we're putting that door up um, Marie has got her tent uh, set up the right way around and she's just uh, making her, uh, her curry up which is unfortunate because I was hoping to have a look at that and it looked alright didn't it? It did. What we saw of it. Yeah so we'll just have to see if this lightning and thunder is happening and we're not very far away from the car if needs be but we don't want to do that really do we? No, don't want to worse walking in it or saying putting it. Mm, lesser of two evils, really. I mean, we, we've gone down and we're not camping up high where we're planning to, so we're no. surrounded by hills and other features. No trees, is there? No trees. Just ask the question, is you know, is lightning going to be attracted to carbon fibre poles <laughs> and titanium pegs? Well, it's aluminium, I think, these, actually. Really? Yeah, I don't think. They're 60 quid walking paths, not carbon fibre for that price. Yeah. Well, we'll see, won't we? Right. You're right over there. Yeah, also. Okay. See any of it? No, see anything. Marie's not joining us for breakfast. Her mission was not completed, so <laughs> she's going to continue walking over that hill and back down to Coniston, which is fair play. And we're not going to be able to weigh a rucksack, unfortunately. Um, but no, you've, uh, you've done well there. We, we lived, didn't we? Uh, no thunder, lightning, no problems, no leaks, no deaths. It's close. <laughs> it has been close. He's been bloody warmed last night.
Right then, that's us away. Um, variety of weights there. Uh, congratulations to Marie for doing what she's done. That thing of hers weighs an absolute ton. Um, campsite is exactly as we found it, which is actually a farmer's field, she's fine. And Nigel and I and Marie are heading down there. Then Marie's path is going up and over. Um, or she might be able to go around that ridge because basically her target's on the other side, which is Coniston. And then uh, Nigel and I are going down that way to the car. Uh, good two days well, Cam. Um, hope Marie's finishes well. Good job.